Welcome to the section. Uh, today I am going to take the first unit that is unit 1 chemical bonding. What is chemical bonding? Chemical bonding is nothing but the two or more atoms join together to form a molecule. How it is happen? This is happen by the redistribution of electrons to attain stable uh, to attain stable noble gas configuration. So based on that we have many we have different varieties of chemical bonding. First we classify the chemical bond into two category that is primary bond and secondary bond. The primary bond which is considered as a very strong bond compared to secondary bond. The secondary bond are weak in nature. So let me first go see, let me first see the primary bond. First one is covalent bond, second one ionic or electrovalent bond, third one is coordination or dative bond and fourth one is metallic bond. This metallic bond is also considered as a strong one compared to other weak bonds. So let me see what is first, uh, what is covalent bond. Basically, here I am explaining the pro definition, properties and uh, based on that uh, base and based on the covalent nature of your molecule, what are all the properties? That is a, a short form only I am discussing here. So covalent bond, it is a mutual sharing of electron. If you have an atom A and B, we need to we need two electron for bond formation. These two electrons are donated equally by both the atoms, then it is called covalent bond. And here it is maybe a single bond or double bond or triple bond. So three types of bo covalent bonds are there. Depend on the number of electrons participating in the bond formation. So let me have an, an example that is methane which is an example for a covalent compounds. We know that atomic electron configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p, x1, 2p, y1, 2p, z1. So one of s electron, 2s electron is shifted to the pz. So it is, the carbon has 4 valency. So in the 4 orbitals are halfly filled, it needs one electron to completely fill its orbital. So hydrogen which has actually one electron, so each hydrogen donate one electron to carbon and form four bonds. So this is an example for, this is an example for covalent bond. So it is called the sigma bonds. Other than that we have also pi bonds. The pi bond is nothing but the lateral overlap of p, x, p, y or p, z orbitals. So in alkene and al alkene and alkyne, for example CH2 double bond CH2 means this a single bond is formed by the equal sharing of electron by both the carbon atom that present in between the nucleus of four, in between the nucleus of two atom. That is, this is considered as a sigma bond. And second one, which is lateral overlap of p y or p z orbital, it is considered as a lateral overlap, somewhat low energy compared to sigma bond. It is called pi bonds. So I am just explaining what is covalent bond as definition and types of bonds in the covalent and how the covalent bond is formed. Now we are going to see the properties of covalent bond. So when you think about the covalent bond formation, it is a directional one. What is the meaning for directional? Here the bonding electron present only in between the nucleus of an R2 atom. Here the attraction, see if you take it, it may be an attraction means that exists only in the area between the A and B center point. 
and here there is no interaction with an another EI and here there is no interaction and here also no interaction. The bonding is only in between the two atom at the center and above, below and behind there is no interaction that shows that it is a directional one. Second one, it is a low melting point and boiling point compared to your ionic compounds. When, you, when we see the ionic bond properties, ionic molecule properties, we can understand why the covalent molecule have a low melting point and boiling points. In the point of a conduction, electrical conductor and the thermal conductor, it is non-conducting in nature fused state and even in the dissolved state, dissolved state means it is a form of solution, the, it may dissolve in any solvent, so that form a solution, that solution to not form, not conduct electricity. And the solubility, when you think about the solubility of covalent bond, it is insoluble in water because water is in polar nature, but it is soluble in organic solvent which is non-polar in nature. So that shows that this molecule is always exist in the neutral state and it is soluble only in the non-polar solvents and not in the polar solvent. But in some cases, there may be a deviation that is, for example, your covalent molecule that is HCl, here the hydrogen donates one electron and chlorine also donate one electron and both the sharing of this electron, it form a noble gas configuration, both hydrogen and chlorine got noble gas configuration, noble gas configuration is nothing but 2, 8 and 18. So here hydrogen got 2 electrons and chlorine also got 8 electron in outermost orbital. So based on that we understand that this molecule is covalent in nature. So this covalent molecule basically what is the property of covalent molecule? It is insoluble in water, it should insoluble in water. But actual thing is the HCl is soluble in water. Why, why we observe some deviation here? This is because of a polarity that is generated in the molecule due to the electro, due to the high electronegative property of a chlorine atom. Because chlorine is halogen which is highly electronegative. It needs only one electron to fill its outermost orbital as a noble gas configuration. So it always need an electron. So it attracts this bonding electron towards itself while the hydrogen which is highly electropositive in nature. So the bonding electron is not exactly in between the hydrogen and Cl, it is somewhat close to chlorine that makes this that create a polarity in the bond like uh, here the delta plus is formed here delta minus is formed. So the polarity generation is the only reason the solubility nature of water solubility nature of HCl. So this is observed in HCl and some other molecules. So we called it as a polar covalent bond. It is not an exact covalent it contains some ionic character, so it is called as ionic property, ionic percentage in the covalent compound. So polar covalent bond. So this is the reason why even some covalent molecule are soluble in water and maximum of covalent general property when you think about the general property of covalent molecule, the covalent molecules are insoluble in water and soluble in organic solvent which is non-polar in nature. Now we can we see what is ionic bond. The ionic bond is nothing but the complete donation of electron by an atom to form a cation and to, to the valence cell of another atom called anion. So donation of an electron or one or more electron by an atom to form cation and acceptance of an electron and it forms anion. The interaction between the two 
thing that is cation and the anion is called as a ionic bond. Let me have an example that is Na and Cl. When you think about the electronic configuration of Na, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. The one electron in the outermost orbital is always easily, easily given by the sodium to attain its noble gas configuration that is 8 electron in the valence cell. But when you think about the chlorine, the chlorine always need one electron to complete its octet. So it easily accept this electron. So that makes Na plus and Cl minus. So the interaction between the electrostatic interaction between the attraction between the cation and the anion is called as a what? Is called as a ionic bond. So let me first uh, next we are going to see the properties of a ionic molecule. So we think that ionic bond is nothing but the interaction of a cation formed a cation and a anion. Now first we think about what is directional or di non-directional property of a covalent molecule. So it is an interaction only, no this interaction get extended at whatever the distance is possible. So that shows that like magnetic force of attraction, the electrostatic force of attraction is all, is all around the cation and the anion. So that shows that the ionic bond is non-directional. This is not only exists in between the two um, species that is cation and anion. Like your covalent molecule, the electro electron bond that bonding electron that present in between the two atoms that is present in the center of two atom. There is no interaction in the uh, above that one, below that one, and behind that one. But in the case of ionic bond, the force of attraction is in all the direction. It is extended, no? So that's why the ionic molecules are non-directional in character. So due to the force of attraction, in the non-directional manner, the ionic molecules have a high melting point and boiling point compared to your covalent molecules. Now you can understand that why covalent molecules are low melting point, boiling point compared to your ionic molecule. For example, NaCl goes melting point above 500 or 700, but when you think about the methane, which exists in the gas in the room temperature itself, that shows that it is a, poor, it is a very low melting point and low melting and boiling points. And when you think the second one, second important property is conduction. NaCl in the solid state it will not conduct electricity. But if we oh, but if you melt the NaCl infused state and if you dissolve the NaCl in water, it shows electrical conductivity. So we can understand that the ionic molecules, ionic compounds or soluble or conduct ionic molecules conduct electricity in molten and solution state. The third point of property is solubility. The solubility when you think about the solubility of ionic molecule, they are soluble in the water that is polar solvent and insoluble in the non-polar solvent like a benzene and CCL4. And final one of ionic bond is ionic bo properties of ionic bond is binding energy is very high. Because of the non-directional nature of ionic bond, we can understand that there is a many property variation in the ionic bond compared to your covalent bond. So the force of attraction is all direction. So we need a large energy to break the molecule. But when you think about the covalent molecule, we need only a minimum energy. So that is why it has a low melting, low boiling and the binding energy is poor. So everything is based on how the bond is present in between the two atoms. So this is all thing about explain uh, what is the difference between the covalent and the ionic bond. The third uh, strong bond, primary bond is coordination or co dative bond. How coordination is, coordinative bond is formed? 
an atom which act as a donor how it act as a donor by sharing both bonding electron to another atom which is called as a acceptor for example in the case of ammonia which has a lone pair of electron this lone pair of electron is donated to a hydrogen ion and it form a complex see normally the bond always represented in the form of dash but in coordination bond you mention you should mention the arrow mark which donates the two electron for the bond formation so here the ammonia donates two bonding electron to make a bond with the hydrogen so that's why the arrow mark is from the ammonium uh, ammonia to hydrogen so this is exist in the form a special type of representation because it is a complex molecule coordination molecule always uh, considered as a complex one and it is represented in the square bracket so overall thing is ammonium ion it's donates it's a lone pair of electrons so definitely it contains a positive charge so the whole species represented as a positive charge one this is one example for an organic molecule even you can observe uh, this type of coordination bond in many metal complex metal complexes for example the carbon monoxide reacts with iron and form uh, iron co complex so here the donor is carbon monoxide which donates two electron to iron for bond formation depend on the coordination number the molecule form that much of co coordination bond now we are going to see the properties of the coordination bond here the donor which can able to donate two electron it is called as a nucleophile and the acceptor which accept the incoming two electron that is called electrophile so more metals are always electrophile which can accommodate two electrons and the organic species which can able to donate two electron is always considered as a nucleophile so now we are going to compare the properties of the coordination complexes with the ionic and coordination compounds ionic and co covalent molecules first one melting point and boiling point when you think about the melting point and boiling point the coordination complex has high melting and boiling point compared to your covalent compound but less one compared to ionic compound that shows that it is a in between property of covalent and ionic ionic is somewhat very high in all properties but covalent is somewhat less compared to ionic property the coordination present in the center of both covalent and the coordination even the polarity it is semi polarity in nature that shows that it's not non polarity as like your covalent molecule and it is not highly polar as like your ionic molecule it is semi polar then it like but in the solubility it most probably is soluble in the non polar solvent it is most probably is insoluble in the polar solvents and in the stability also it uh, when you think about the stability of the compound it compared to your covalent it was somewhat high stable but it is a uh, uh, when you think about the ionic it is a less stable and directional point of view about the bond it is a directional one as like covalent bond so this is the some concepts and coordination bond next we are going to see the metallic bond see it is a new type of bond this metallic bond is not is not in between the two different atoms it happen within the metal atoms same metal atoms when you think about the sodium metal the sodium metals are present the atoms are arranged in a uh, regular manner in a to form a crystal lattice and this arrangements how the atoms are how the atoms are arranged in a regular manner how it is possible that are all explained by this metallic bond and for that we need a theory and it is called as a electron gas model theory what is the postulates of this theory this theory first tell that all the atoms all the atom which has valence electron and it loses the valence electron to form electron cloud which has a negative which creates a negative field so 
the atom so for example if you have a sodium atom this sodium atom lose its valence electron and this electron form a electron cloud due to the loss of a valence electron the sodium atom can uh, gets positive charge which is called which is called as a atomic uh, kernel or positive ion positive kernel so the interaction between this electron cloud which is negative uh, in charge and positive kernel that is atomic kernel is called metallic bond the metal atom which is positive ionic core which arranged regularly to form a crystal lattice is that is possible due to the electron cloud created within the metal then now we are going to see about the properties the properties of metallic bond it is a good conductor of heat and current and stencil strain elasticity non directional so all these properties are possible when you imagine the metal contains an electron cloud because of the electron cloud it uh, it has a mobile electron so current flow is very fast in a metal compared to your non elements and it also has some elastic character because of the fluctuation of this electron electron cloud that makes metal as a malleable have a stencil strain and a elastic elasticity property and this bond attraction is also a non directional as like your ionic bond the force of attraction between the electron cloud and the positive kernel is in all the direction so it is non directional in nature 